With us now, Texas Democratic State Senator Wendy Davis. Senator, good morning. Good morning. So no leaning, no eating, no going to the bathroom <laughs> for 11 straight hours. How did you do it physically? How tough was it? Actually, uh, it was 13 hours because even when I was cut off from my filibuster, we spent the next two hours arguing the procedural move by the chair that took me out of the of the filibuster. So I still had to stand while we continued to argue that it was a it was a test of endurance, but it was well worth it. This is a very important issue, and it affects women across the state of Texas. You've met tough things before in your life, though, as a single mother, a woman who went from community college to TCU uh, to Harvard Law School and back to practice law. So this seems to be another challenge for you. When you started, uh, did you what did you think you would accomplish when you went on your feet that day? Really, what I hoped to do was to give voice to the women across the state of Texas and men who love them who would be affected by this law. The law essentially would mean that almost every clinic in Texas would close. We would have only five remaining open. And I wanted to give voice to the people who wanted to be heard on the issue. I spent a great deal of time reading the personal stories and testimonies from people who wanted to share why this law was going to have such a devastating impact on Texas women. But did you think you could stop it by this filibuster or did you just simply want to make a very powerful statement on behalf of the people you just mentioned? You know, I, I thought that, that we could stop it, and we did stop it for now. Um, no one knew for sure whether the governor would call us back for another special session on this particular topic. I'm disappointed that he did, but it shows his continued um, interest in intruding in the privacy of women and their decision making. It's big government intruding in private lives in Texas, and Texas values don't don't cotton to that very well. Um, and I'm seeing a, an uproar against it from all sides of the political spectrum because this truly is about government intrusion into people's private lives. And unfortunately, Governor Perry and Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst insist on continuing to exercise big government over some very private decision making. Senator Davis, uh, Governor Perry has called this back into session on July 1st, and this bill is likely to pass. So what do you think you will have accomplished? Will you do this filibuster again? You know, I was able to do the filibuster because this bill came to the floor on the last day of the special session, and it made it possible to kill the bill as a consequence. It's not likely that they'll make that same mistake again. Who knows? If they do, of course, we will do everything we can to try to kill this bill. But I do think that something tremendous was accomplished, and that was there was an incredible focus put on what's happening here in Texas. Women and men across Texas are in an uproar about it. And I don't expect that their concerns on this issue are going to go away with the passage of the law. And I think that there will be political consequences in the future as people exercise their opinion about this issue at the ballot box. It has also catapulted you in the political limelight. Uh, will you run for governor or for state, national office now? You know, right now, I have my hands full, honestly. As we go into this next special session, we have a tremendous amount of work to do, and I'm focused fully on that. I don't know what the future will hold, but I'm honored to have people talking about that. But I did hear you say you'd be lying to say that it, ha that it, uh, it has crossed your mind about running for higher office, right? Well, it, it, yes, it certainly has. But I don't know if now is, is the right time for me. We'll see. Well, there isn't a seat until 2014, right? Yes. Senator <laughs> Davis, thank you. Thank you both.